Welcome to the Better Together Here podcast with your hosts, Devin and Ashley, helping you make the most of your time in New York City. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Better Together Here podcast. My name is Devin. And my name is Ashley. And in today's episode, we are going to give you five safety tips for exploring New York City and how to do it in a safe way. Because let's face it, New York City, it's a big city, which means there are a lot of people, some of which are not as nice as you'd like them to be. And some people are looking for trouble and some people are causing trouble. And while we won't dive deep into how safe New York City is or isn't in general, just we want you to be aware that bad things can happen and it's good to be aware of your surroundings and have some things in your mind that as you're traveling, as you're exploring, you can just be aware of, be cognizant of, and stay safe. And make sure you stick around to the end because tip number five, I swear, this is something I see on a daily basis where I am worried I'm going to watch someone die or get seriously, seriously injured. So let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is the subway, because in most people's cases, if you come to New York or you're in New York, you're going to be on the subway at one point or another. And while there are a lot of horror stories that you hear on the subway, I think it is a little bit overblown in a sense where in most instances, you're going to get on the subway and it's going to be fine and nothing's going to happen. But there are bad things that can happen, and so it's good to be aware. And with that being said, being aware, don't wear noise-canceling headphones on the subway. It's just not worth it. You can wear headphones. You can wear earbuds. Like, if you want to listen to music, listen to podcasts, whatever, but don't use the noise-canceling feature. It's just, I feel like that's kind of safety 101, whether you're in New York or not. Like, if you're out, you're around people, you're in an unfamiliar environment with people who you don't really know, it's just good to be aware of your surroundings. Yeah, and, and like Devin said, if, you, if you're going to use headphones, that's okay, but just make sure that you can hear what's going on around you. If you're going to listen to music, listen to it at a low volume because you want to be able to hear if somebody's talking to you. You want to hear if somebody is raising their voice and the next train over. You want to be able to hear the announcements from the train conductor. All of these things are going to help you stay safer on the subway. Yeah, so that's kind of the first tip, and that goes for, I would say, subway, walking, biking, just being in New York, like... Be aware of your surroundings. As for the subway in particular, one tip that was given to us by some lifelong New Yorkers is that the middle train is typically where you'd want to be and is typically the safest. So that's not to say that nothing bad could happen in the middle train, but the reason the middle train is advantageous is that the conductor is in the middle of the train, and so the two cars next to them are where you would have, in theory, if something were to be happening, you have a conductor who can actually step in, be making a call, or, or at least be aware and can be helping with the situation. Whereas if you are on the front or the back of the train, the very end cars on either end, the driver is not able to help anything. The driver is driving. And so the conductor can kind of be a little bit of a safety net. Plus, generally speaking, there are just going to be more people in the middle trains and there is safety in numbers. When you end up, I, I can't tell you the number of times, unfortunately, kind of before we knew this, where you'd walk into like one of the end cars and it's you and someone asleep and someone uh, someone else doing something sketchy and you're like, why did I get in this train? Why did I, why did I get on this car specifically? Yeah, you definitely want to stay in the middle trains because the... The first train and the last train are always the the least full and always seem to have the sketchiest people in them. So stay in the middle. Yeah, 100%. And on that note, especially when it comes to traveling on the subway, but even just walking, taking taxis, Ubers, whatever it might be, I would try as much as you can to avoid solo travel after midnight. And even just like when it's... I'm not going to say when it's nighttime or dark because that's kind of unrealistic, but there's just something about after like 12 o'clock, one in the morning, just doesn't seem like a lot of great things happen. And for whatever reason, things just can often get a little less safe. So if you have to, you know, be traveling late at night by yourself, I would make sure, like try to let someone know where you're going, have your location sharing on with a close friend or family member just do the things that you can to be as safe as possible. And like, especially at night, if you're going to be traveling by yourself, like don't wear headphones, like don't be on your phone. 
just be alert, be attentive, and, you know, try and stay in well-lit areas, those types of things, if you have to travel late, late at night by yourself. And one thing that I'll add that's just, like, maybe, like, an added safety tip is going along with what Devin was saying was with being aware of your surroundings. If you see somebody that's looking at you in a weird way or acting a certain way, just cross the street, go to a different street, go to a different block, Trust your gut. If there's something weird going on and you don't want to be walking right next to it, just change directions. Like, you can go out of your way to cross the street or go around the block or something. Like, trust your gut with that. If there's something that you don't want to be walking by or someone that's making you feel uncomfortable, move yourself away from that situation. 100%. And and on that note, if there is someone that you encounter that is yelling or screaming or whatever it might be, you don't have to engage with people. Remember that. Like you you don't have to talk to people. You don't have to look at them. Like there there's a reason that a lot of New Yorkers who you see, you know, if you come and you're visiting and you think, man, like New Yorkers, they're not like paying attention to anyone or like they seem to just be like in their own thing. It's like they're they're paying attention. It's just they're not gonna like make eye contact with people who they don't want to. Like I remember when we came out and we were looking for our apartment and our our broker and our friend we were walking down the stairs and someone was for whatever reason, just like screaming, kind of having a mad fit and like screaming in his face. And he didn't even look at them. He just like blew past them, kept going. And we were like kind of alarmed. We we're like, you know, you want to look, you want to see what's going on. But he was like, no, just keep your head down, keep walking. Obviously be aware and be cognizant of what that person might be doing, but you don't have to engage with people. And the same thing goes like for people asking for money on the subway whatever it might be, like technically it's illegal. It's illegal to ask for money on the subway and like you don't have to engage with people and you can just mind your own business. There's a lot of safety in just minding your own business. However, yeah. with that, there are some people that will ask for money that are maybe a little bit aggressive. So the best answer I have found is, sorry, I don't have any cash. Originally try to like avoid avoid that person or don't respond. But if they're persistent and in your face, like, come on, please give me money. Just say, sorry, I don't have any cash because that's really hard to argue with. Okay. So on a happier note, let us segue to our, you'll have to check it out segment because this segment makes me very, very happy. It is a wonderful place. It is called Ray's Candy Store. Ash is going to give us a little backstory on who Ray is. And honestly, you have, you literally have to check this place out because it is just, it's kind of a New York iconic spot and it it has so much history to it it's awesome so ray's candy store is in the uh, east village right across from tompkins square park and ray was originally an immigrant from iran he moved to new york city and worked as a dishwasher to save money to buy his candy store almost 50 years ago we love this place we go here for a dessert a lot they have really amazing fried oreos they have ice cream they have fried reese's you think candy store, there's not like a whole lot from the candy side. It's more of a dessert shop, but it does have kind of these obscure things like Ash said, like deep fried Reese's and, you know, a lot of different ice cream options and milkshakes and things like that. And it's a, it's kind of the definition of hole in the wall. It's cash only. Uh, you know, a lot of the machinery has certainly been there for a long, long time, but it's good. It's great. Like, and it's always like nice people in there. If you see Ray, he's nice. He's this kind of like just joyful old man who loves his store and loves like being a part of that community. He's been around for a long time. People in the area love him. Like he is just a staple of that area of like the Tompkins Square Park area. Yeah. He's always super nice when you go in and he has newspaper clippings and pictures of him with different famous people that have come in because he he kind of loves to be the center of attention, it seems, but he's a really nice guy. Yeah, he's proud of his story, and and the, and the dessert is great, so you'll have to check it out. Back to the safety tips. So the fourth safety tip, and this one's kind of an interesting one, because if you're traveling here, you can't actually go on airplanes with this unless you check it in your bag, and it's hard to buy this in New York City. It's a weird conundrum, but as much as you can carry a pepper spray or some other type of basic weapon, whatever that might be. Again, if you're traveling here, you can be limited on that. There are only like two stores in all of New York City that actually sell pepper spray and they're very, very expensive. You can't get them shipped to New York. It's this whole weird thing, but be creative, do what you can to at least have something on your person that if 
it came down to it, you were ready to, heaven forbid, you have to fight someone or fight back or protect yourself. It's just good to be prepared as much as you can and have something on you that would deter or at least give you some type of fighting chance with any type of situation where you were in danger. And it, for me, it at least like gives me peace of mind that if I did have to try to defend myself, that I have a little bit of a leg up against against somebody else or would be able to create space between me and that person if I'm carrying pepper spray, which I more often than not carry pepper spray on the subway. Walking around, I don't always have it, but on the subway, I usually have pepper spray. And this is like a just kind of plug in general to look up self-defense classes in your area, wherever you live, because there are a lot of them. Some of them are like free and offered through like parks and recs and city like departments. Uh, It's just, it's a good life skill to have self-defense. And that leads us to our last tip, honestly, maybe the most important. So let's just say this again, New York city, city that never sleeps, hustle and bustle. There are tons of cars, tons of pedestrians, tons of bicyclists. And unfortunately too, Tons of electric bikes that basically are mini cars, not mini cars. Let's say mini, like they're they're, moving as fast as cars. Yeah, they're moving as fast as cars. They're heavy. There are also a ton of like moped type scooters that are definitely not legal and not like registered, all that stuff. And they'll ride in the bike lane. And it's a little bit chaotic. And in there are definitely spots in particular in the city where it's worse than others. All that to say, when you are walking around New York City and you are about to step into the street from the sidewalk or even into a bike lane, look both ways. It's literally elementary. Like you learned it when you were like, a child. What did your What did your mom teach you? Look both ways before you cross the street. Every street, every time. And that's more important than anywhere else here in New York City. Like you, you just have to look both ways because even if you think, okay, you know, I, I'm stepping into a street where the bike lane is going east to west or whatever. I'll just look the one direction where the bikes should be coming from. I will tell you there are probably bikes coming the other direction. A lot of the bikes will run red lights. A lot of the bikes will swerve in and out of traffic, uh, especially like a lot of the DoorDash drivers. For whatever it's worth, like they're out there grinding, they're trying to make a living, but like a lot of them are unsafe and it's it's just something you have to be aware of. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who have had really, really bad accidents by, you know, stepping into a bike lane, not seeing a bike coming, not seeing a scooter coming, whatever it might be, and having, you know, sometimes life-threatening injuries. It's just they're moving really fast. Like some of these e-bikes, some of these scooters are going 30 miles an hour. And if you step into a bike lane and get hit by that, it's not going to work. And kind of shameless plea here as well. Just never stand in the bike lane. There's no reason ever for you to stand in a bike lane. I'm saying this because we bike a lot in the city and it's like, truthfully, it's annoying, but also from a safety perspective, like never stand in the bike lane. I don't care if you don't see bikes coming, just stand on the sidewalk and wait until you have the cross light on for you to go look both ways and then walk. Like it's such a simple thing that could save so many people from like accidents, scary situations, confrontation. Yes. Confrontation. Cause that's one, that's one really quick way to get yelled at by a New Yorker is to be step into the bike lane and almost get hit. hundred percent. So look both ways. Like if you have one takeaway from this entire episode, it okay. Two takeaways. Be aware of your surroundings and look both ways before crossing the street, no matter what. And if you do those two things, you're going to be much safer than most people. And that means like to being aware of like how much you're on your phone when you're walking in the street. Like you don't realize that, you know, people around you on the sidewalks and in the bike lanes, et cetera, they are commuting like they're getting from like they are using that as their commuting path. And by you like being distracted or not paying attention or like being unaware, it can cause problems. And it's also just frustrating because everyone's trying to get somewhere. So just be aware and be respectful of the people around you who are trying to get to their destination. And if everyone did that, man, the streets would be a lot better and a lot safer. So be aware, look both ways before you cross the street. And we do want to kind of finish this with saying generally New York City is safe. We've lived here for uh, coming up on a few years and we have had some unsettling run-ins and we have had some experiences that 
we wish we didn't have. But generally speaking, we've been safe because we follow these types of tips. We try to be aware. So do the same and you will have a great experience. If you have not already, please, please, please follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Automatically download our episodes, leave a review. All those things help this podcast get into the hands of other people who need to hear these tips like yourself. And other than that, we'll catch you on the next episode. Oh.